Hello and welcome to today's video where we will be walking through a user tour of Arena's concourse package. We'll be utilizing a free trial instance in this video and if you'd like to walk along using your own free trial instance, visit our website at saloni.com and select the free trial option. Alright, let's jump into it. Here we can see I've already set up my own free trial instance and I'm logged in as a user named Carl as shown here under our user tab. Let's quickly orient ourselves to what we're looking at. We can see across the top we have a global search bar, some controls indicating our shopping cart, adding entities, help, and of course our user profile. Here we can see we have a list of our projects. Projects are a vertical grouping of data. These segment our data into different lines of business, departments, sections. Um, really it's as seen fit by your organization. To the left hand side we have some controls and we're going to go through each of those. And then finally in the center you can see we have a variety of graphs. Now I've done minimal work since starting up this instance so you'll see I actually have two displays that are blank and you should too when you first start up your instance. But all of these displays are really helping a user quickly understand what is in Arena. We can see we're capturing metadata, such as what zones or sources or types of data, recent work that you may or may not have done. And then finally, we're also capturing behavioral data. So what are users doing within Arena and what are they looking at? What are they provisioning? All right, let's first jump into catalog. And throughout this video, we're gonna walk step-by-step step through each of the controls just to familiarize you with Arena's interface. Catalog is where we can see a list of all of our entities, and an entity is a data set. You can see here I have several data sets. You should have the same ones, uh, minus a few that are named here Good Data and Good Data Secure Vault. We can see here that I can see a variety of different information about these data sets, but it's worth noting that most of the time when users are looking for data, they may not go to the list of entities, but rather they utilize the global search bar. The global search bar allows us to search for any term we'd like, and you can see we're gonna get a variety of results back. Here you can see we have several data sets, some with the name customer, some without, and that's because global search utilizes not only the name, but also labels, descriptions, custom attributes, as well as the fields to search for these data sets. In addition to our data, you can also see that we have a few terms. We'll review these in more detail under the control section, but these are terms that are found in our business glossary, and these can be easily searched for as well. Let's now filter our results down. We'll choose just entities, and we see we have more appropriate dropdowns. And in this case, let's look for data in our raw zone. By default, all of your data is going to be uncategorized, but I've gone ahead and changed a few to raw and I'll show you how to do so. Here we can go ahead and open up a given entity and we see we have our customer data set. Now it's worth noting that regardless of what data set you open, they're all going to have this same general look and feel. We can see several tabs here across the top and each of these are going to provide a variety of information. Details provides business information such as labels, descriptions, and different attributes. We'll see in the settings section, we can actually update these attributes. Uh, key value pairs, and then finally we can again link those terms from our business glossary to an entity. We have technical information as well. Much of this is automatically gathered, uh, but you can see we can change a few things such as names, and in this case, zone as well. The field is going to indicate not only schema, but also provide another opportunity for users to give more detail. We can link glossary terms, provide descriptions, uh, indicate, for instance, that this is the primary key. And as you'll see on a couple other fields, we might want to implement some data privacy or data quality rules. For instance, if I take a look at my email, that's a sensitive attribute. We'll see here in a second, I'm going to want to go ahead and tokenize that using a uh, SHA-256 algorithm in this case, but we could certainly select something different. And I could also apply a masking pattern, and I might want to do that a little bit later to my phone number. 
So in this case, we're masking that, and you can see we're taking the first seven characters and then replacing them with a star. Along the same idea, we can also provide data quality rules, and you'll see how we're able to update those later. But here we are applying a North American Postal Code validation. So we're ensuring that in this case, the postal code is indeed the correct code. Next, we can take a look at our data profiling. Now, by default, this is not going to be run, but I've gone ahead and run that. And we can see we have both the entity level as well as field level profiling. So if we look at things like state, we should see some variation. And if you'd like to run profiling, you can easily do that instantly by clicking Run Data Profile. In this case, I'll actually go ahead and rerun it. Now, the data quality and data privacy options that we added um, are going to be reflected um, in our lineage. And we can see the results of our data quality in the Data Quality tab. Again, I've already run that. But for you to run it, simply navigate to the top, click Run Data Quality. By default, we'll put some standard naming in there, but again, you have that ability to change that as well as the zone. Real quickly before jumping to Lineage, let's just take a look at Data Preview, and we can see all of our results. Now, looking back to the Lineage, again, we can see we have our data set that we're in. As I mentioned, I've already run our data quality, and that's indicated on our Lineage. Our data quality then split our data up into what we named good data and bad data. And you can see I actually have the ability to jump in and look at that data set. Doing so is going to open it in another tab. And again, we have that same general look and feel. Now looking at our lineage again, of course, we can look backwards and see what's been done as well as forward and see what's also been done. And in this case, after running data quality, I also went ahead and ran my data privacy. Again, data privacy is very easy. I can simply click the Run Token and Masking. We get a similar side panel here where we have the option to make changes. Uh, but in this case, I've already done so. So let's jump to this entity. And we can see in our data preview that not only have our data quality rules already been applied, but our first name and last name have been tokenized, for instance. Our phone number has been masked, and our email has been tokenized. Finally, um, the last thing we might want to do with our data sets is actually add it to our shopping cart. This is going to drive the Data Mart aspect. And I can easily add data to my cart by clicking the Add to Cart button here. And so clicking that. You can see where I'm pooling my data. In this case, again, the data is in S3. And then I also have the ability to filter that data down. Maybe, for instance, I don't want all of the data. We can apply a filter or column selectors. Uh, but for this example, let's go ahead and take all of it. We'll see our shopping cart is updated. All right, that's the catalog portion. Let's now move to control. Control allows us to implement different rules, rule sets, and functions. And these rules are the exact rules that we saw under our fields tab. So as a quick reminder, we can see data quality. We have a variety of different rule sets here. And those, again, are created here under rules. In the non-trial version, you do have the ability to go and create new rules. But in the trial, you'll see we have these out-of-the-box rules. Next, we have rule sets. Rule sets are just a grouping of rules. Again, in the trial version, we don't have the option to add those. And then finally, we have zones. Like the other options, in the full version, you do have the ability to create and change zones, uh, adding both new and taking away zones. But here in the trial, we only have a limited set. Finally, there's the glossary. Here we have out-of-the-box options for our glossary terms. Again, we have the ability to add those individually or in bulk in the full version. But in the trial, we can see we have a couple out-of-the-box options. Here we have our descriptions, labels, appropriate owners. And then again, we can see actually different related entities and terms. All right, that's it for control. Let's now move on to consume. 
Consume is where we see our shopping cart. So I can navigate to the shopping cart option here, or it's worth noting, I can also navigate to shopping cart by clicking on the cart itself. Either way, once a user has gathered all the data they need, they can begin the checkout process by clicking provision. Selecting provision will walk us through the provisioning wizard. In the full version, you do have the option to make changes here, adding drop downs, implementing different uh, capacities, but here we see just a few. We can select then where the data is landed. Maybe I want to land it on a remote server, a data lake, or a relational database. Here you can see some examples such as SQL Server or Amazon Redshift. But in the trial instance, we only have the data lake option available. We'll enter our schema. Finally, we have our overview page. Clicking Submit will kick off that job and land our data in the new location. Next option we have is Monitor. Monitor allows us to see the process and progress of our different workflows. Now, workflows are automatically generated anytime we do things like provisioning, data profiling, data quality, or data privacy. In this case, I can take a look at my workflows. We can see we do not have any currently running or queued, but my previous workflows have already been completed, and we can see their status as well as different details here. Provisioning allows us to see the list of provisions. And that's it for monitoring. Let's move on to settings. Settings is where we're able to adjust the custom attributes. Again, we saw those in the catalog in terms of drop downs, multi selects, and single selects. Typically, we would have the ability to change those, but we do not in the free trial version. And then finally, we have our help option. Here you can see that we can be redirected to our documentation. It's going to give us full access to all of our different abilities. So for instance, we can look up things like data quality and find our results. And then we also are able to directly access the arena support portal. Here users can input a ticket if they're having any issues and our support team will help them along the way. All right, that was a quick guided tour of the Zaloni Arena Concourse Package. If you have any questions or would like to learn more, visit our website at zaloni.com.